Hello there, my name is Ismos and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial and uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, how you can fake smoke simulations in Blender 2.8 and uh, you might be wondering why would anyone want to fake smoke simulations when Blender comes with a smoke simulator already shipped with it. Yeah, so here is my reason. So I've been watching a lot of these uh, destruction scene compilations from movies and uh, what you're seeing here is just raw computation power a demonstration of how powerful computers have become you couldn't simulate such scenes back in the day our studios didn't have that kind of computation power on their hands what they resorted to was just faking everything uh, so say something like a rigid body si simulation like like that they couldn't do such simulations at such a scale the computation power that was available to them was limited so uh, like uh, the dust particles you saw there uh, that could be faked using splites which is just simply a texture on a plane uh, maybe a dust texture on a plane that would be emitted by a particle system to kind of hopefully look like a lot of dirt or a lot of smoke or sometimes even maybe a lot of water they didn't even have not just the computation power but the software uh, today we they have the software and they have the computation power uh, today I have the software which is blender it can do simulations can do rigid body systems uh, but what it what I don't have access to is that kind of computation power I'm limited with how much I can do and I imagine anyone watching this kind of video does have the same limitation so what I'm going to resort to is going back to how they used to do things uh, by faking a lot of these things uh, instead of using computation power to uh, to simulate them computation power they didn't have uh, that I don't have either so we're going to be looking at different scenes and they're trying to fake whatever they did here within the limitations we have as small studios or in video uh, creators so and that uh, today we're just going to be doing this smoke simulation and just look at uh, how to uh, do something like this uh, here's another reason why you might want to watch this video so if you're going to use it use the particle system uh, the blender particle system uh, you will notice that uh, it has a few limitations and one of the limitation is the limitations it has is that uh, you can't change uh, the particles after they are emitted for example you can't change uh, the scale of these particles after they are emitted you set the scale of the of the particles before they are emitted and after they are emitted you can't do anything to them uh, maybe you can use forces to have them change their position to affect their position and rotation but you can't change the individual particles particles are uh, rotation or scale uh, and uh, that was a problem for me uh, because I wanted to have this smoke kind of dissipate have an effect of the smoke dissipating and uh, the, the best way to, uh, to achieve that is uh, uh, scale the particles that we are uh, far away from the emitter uh, so that to, uh, to kind of simulate that dissipating smoke effect uh, the smoke spreading around and uh, you don't really have a way to affect uh, this the scale of the the particles uh, using the particle system you can see all these the settings we have here maybe in the future uh, things like animation nodes can help with that or uh, the new functions branch can help with that but right now uh, in the official branch uh, we don't really have that kind of control so that's why that's why maybe another reason why you might uh, want to watch this because i figured out a way to kind of uh, uh play with that to kind of affect the scale our uh, rotation and maybe and even the opacity of the particles depending on their position from their emitter you can see uh as we are emitting uh the, the farthest particles gates kind of fade out uh, faster or fade out as the as time goes also the scale their scale also changes as their distance from uh the particle increase the emitter increases and uh, let me just show you how this looks maybe let me just find that particle splite uh, if we go to if i just look at uh, my that is my yeah so you can see that uh I set up this gradient here that is kind of tied uh, to the position of the emitter and uh, when the particles are emitted they're given a color of either black or white and uh, the range between that uh, depending on their position are uh, from uh, the emitter and you can see we, we get that full white uh, the farther for, for the farthest particle and that black are uh, for the closest uh, particle so 
and uh, the way I got that uh, this gradient to work uh, with the distance of uh, the emitter is that uh, I created this empty that I parented uh, to the object here to the emitter and uh, just so it gets uh, the location of the emitter so that I can use that as uh, the object texture coordinates are uh, for my texture mapping here and uh, so you can see that uh, when I move this I can control where that gradient is and since this, this object is parented to uh, the emitter I get the distance of each particles of each particle from the emitter and, uh, basically that's why I did that and uh, I used you notice that I used a child of constraint instead of just parenting the object directly to the object to the emitter using control p and the reason why i did that is that uh, i didn't want to carry uh, the rotation of this object uh we to the to the uh, texture coordinates and uh, if i check this back on you can see that uh, when i have the rotation on uh the gradient also rotates as uh, the empty rotates and i didn't want that to happen so that's why you see that i check that off uh, so that i get a nice smooth uh, gradient I uh, like that and uh, now that I have that gradient I can use that to control uh, the opacity uh, which you can see here I use that uh, to, as the alpha mask uh, for this for these uh, let me just preview the entire shader uh, for these splites uh, that way that uh, every the further the particle is uh, the lower its opacity is meaning that uh, its alpha is a bit low and it will become transparent so because these particles are staying in position and uh, let me just show you they basically don't move that far they don't move that much and uh, this object is moving away from them uh, their opacity fades on as time goes and uh, we get that dissipating smoke and uh, another thing i used i did here is that uh, since i already had that gradient i could also use it at scale up to scale up uh, the particles uh, the further they are from this object and uh, the way I set that up is that uh, let me just get that gradient here yeah so since we get a gradient of since this uh, texture coordinate mapping gives us this gradient of uh, ranging from 0 to 1 uh, meaning 0 is black and one is fully white uh, we can use that that uh, gradient uh, to map to map it into uh, values actual values zeros zero one two three four whatever values you want and uh, the way I did that is that uh, I got that range uh, from this gradient and use the convert uh, and uh, map range here uh, to to map those color values into actual values uh, that I pushed into uh, the scale values. So instead of using, let me just preview uh, this here so that you can see what's going on. So you can see, let me, let me, just, let me just preview the entire shader here. So you can see, I can scale uh, the size, this, the, I can increase the scale of these textures by just playing with this value here but I want that scale to be affected to be controlled by the position of uh, this object and uh, since I have the position of that object mapped into this black and white gradient which gives me a, a range of values from 0 to 1 uh, but I want this the scale to be higher than 0 and 1 that's why I mapped it to a different range uh, from 0 to negative something I don't, I don't even know why i use those values but i just to show you how you, you can map one scale to another scale uh this is simply that this this is simply what the, this node does and uh, then since this position changes it means that uh, whatever values we get here are going to change for every particle here as you can see that uh, the gradient as the gradient changes uh these values are also going to change because uh the these values are being extrapolated or whatever from this gradient and uh, then I, ca I can fit this value into our scale just show you now if we look at let's see if we can preview this 
not sure if it's visible but you can see that uh, the scale changes there and uh, problem I can't see this correctly when I'm previewing just an image I, yeah you can see that uh, the scale of the object changes because our, our gradient is changing it's changing and it's affecting the the values we are feeding into uh, the gradient and basically that's how I got uh, the smoke to dissipate maybe I have another example here that has a better split and let me show you the exact same thing here again I get uh, the texture I get the gradient which is just a black and white uh, image gradient and uh, black and white gradient map the values to a different range I actually this might not even be that useful because you can see I didn't even change uh, the range here but uh, and uh, feed that into the scale into the scale to get our split and again you can see that uh, uh, if I wanted this to, to scale even further I can just increase the map or decrease it maybe I don't know what works here so you can see the closer they are uh, yeah the closer they are the particles are the smaller they are and the further they are the larger they are <coughs> so now you can see we get that effect maybe I can even scale up this original original uh, uh, whatever splite and you can see the effect even better yeah so I just use this gradient I just map uh, the car the gradient we have here to a different range uh, to get a more pronounced effect and because this gradient uh, this car ramp ranges from 0 to 1 uh, 0 being uh, black and 1 being white and uh, just use this map range to yeah and what else do I do yeah so another thing I did here I'll do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up everything and I uh, used the same gradient this gradient here uh, to change uh, the color to affect the color of uh, the smoke you can see I think I'm using it here it's this gradient here to a change to to affect the color of the smoke so if I want to change this to a different color I can easily do that change the color to whatever you want it to and uh, there you go uh, another thing you might notice is that uh, if we look at this straight on on maybe from a different angle you might start seeing these splites single particle splites which kind of breaks uh, the illusion uh, so to the workaround of that is that uh, I got uh, the original uh, particle system and added a constraint to to it uh, that tracks the camera so that the uh, this this splite is always facing uh, the camera and since the uh, these particles are getting their uh, their rotation directly from the original uh, parent from the original particle I uh, can see that uh, I have under the render as I have the instance uh, I have the object rotation uh, turned on uh, so that these particles always take on the rotation of the object and uh, th since this object is being oriented uh, to the direction of the camera Make sure I can see it. You can see that uh, it won't matter the direction of the camera. They will, the particles will always be facing the camera, which will kind of give us uh, the illusion we want. And I think the smoke looks really nice here. Yeah, so basically that's how I set it up. If you want to watch a step-by-step -step tutorial, I will be doing that on my uh, second channel, uh, Blender Money, and. Uh, yeah, that's where the step-by-step -step tutorial on how I set up everything, uh, that's where it will be uploaded. So uh, I will also be uploading the project files uh, to Patreon. So if you want to examine uh, the entire project and look at uh, how I set up the nodes, you can become a Patreon and uh, support the channel that way and also get to see how I set up everything. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.